Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mr. Teddy Gleason. Grace our convention. We are extremely gratefully and deeply honored. We do welcome you, Mr. President, and I think our member does, does love America and has always been on the ready to uphold and promote. Delegates of the International Longshoremen's Association, the President of the United States. Having the support of union members like yourselves has been a family of four on a fixed income of $20,000 a year would be $1,700 poor people who throughout the entire recession have been unemployed for seven weeks or less. And of all the weeks of unemployment, fifth unemployed. But that doesn't mean that we don't think there are things that can be done about it and that's why we advanced spending for the next several years but in a part of the world that's very close and very important to us, Central America. <laughs> we all know that since we do turn away, we'll pay a terrible price for our neglect. There is a war in Central America that is being fueled by the of our petroleum passed through the Caribbean. It's well to remember that in early 1942, a handful of Hitler submarines sank more time the Nazis during World War II and the Soviets today have recognized that the Caribbean and <laughs> Costa Rica is as strong a democracy as you will find anywhere with a long history. They don't even have an army. If democracy can work in Costa Rica and Honduras, if it can work in El Salvador and Nicaragua and Guatemala, I believe that we must exercise that leadership, and the time is now. Union leaders were arrested. Their presumed crime was trying to develop ties with independent trade unions, including some here of fight on their hands. Back and they've got one like you, Teddy, down below. And there were sounds of struggle coming up. And the one of them still up on the limb called down and said, hold on. And he said, hold on. God has smiled on us. Imagine, with barely clothes on his back and nothing in his stomach, he believed that God had smiled on him because he'd arrived and all their neighbors hoped that they would embrace democracy as they promised. In the first year and a half after the revolution, the United States sent 118. Let me say a few more words about those specific promises. The Sandinistas had promised the organization would be killed when she returned from the polls. She was a grandmother. She told the guerrillas, you can kill me, you can kill my family, you can kill my neighbors, you can't kill us all. The real freedom fighters of El Salvador turned up up Central America's struggle for freedom. We are working for political and economic development. Most of our aid is not military at all. We're providing a shield of military training and assistance to help our neighbors protect themselves from democracy and dictatorship in this region. Many members of the Congress have responded in a genuine spirit of cooperation, have suggested the formation of a national commission 
to build on our bipartisan concerns for high love America. That's true. I don't think America has one groups are working together, pulling together toward a common goal. The cultural thank you and God bless you. We welcome to hear your programs, and we will participate in those things. And we remember from going to school, we didn't go too long. We left in the seventh grade, but we should take care of them and make sure that America is safe. And uh, on behalf of this organization, I'd like to give you this little tag. I know you can't take it home, but you can believe it. I'm glad to present it. And whenever we're pleased the region gets together, trouble to change your schedules and all to be here and I'm delighted I know that a number of us have met before delighted to see them again and to see the others that meeting for the first time we uh, I'm not going to take up too much of the few minutes that we have together with a monologue maybe we can have something of a dialogue here but I think you do recognize that the base that I think has always been or what has been a base to our policy abroad has been our alliance with the state of Israel. And I am delighted and pleased to say that in spite of sometimes some uh, uh, impatience with each other and the struggles that have been going on over the last several months, uh, nothing has shaken that. And uh, we have gone forward uh, providing the technology for the Levy fighter that Israel is going to make the, the plane, the F-16s and so forth, and we're still pledged to the security and the continued existence of the State of Israel. And uh, next week, uh, Prime Minister Begin will be in Washington, and uh, just before him will be President Jamal of Lebanon, and we're still dedicated to bringing about a solution to that problem. and then to negotiating peace there in the Middle East. And uh, I just wanted to say that here before we 
And then I thought for that dialogue, if any of you have any questions or anything in the few minutes remaining, fire away. Not that we're not prepared. <laughs> I have to take a personal note. I'm a lifelong Democrat who supported you in 1980, and I've never regretted it. And with your permission, I'd like to read this because I wouldn't want to make a mistake. Mr. President, he's also the president of APAC. So we have both local leaders here and also some national Jewish leaders here. Morty is a fellow from Miami who is president of American Israel Political Action. You've heard of APAC, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, Lebanon remains a timber box. The agreements reached by Ambassador Habib and Secretary Schultz have not been fully implemented. The PLO has reinfiltrated Lebanon. Syria has refused to remove its troops and missiles. America is always asking Israel to give something to solve problems in the Arab world. Problems that are neither created by Israel nor solved by Israeli actions. You must make it clear to all parties there will be no deal at the expense of Israel. And also, isn't the time apropos to move on to the security alliance with Israel? To your first question there, let me just say, you're absolutely right. And Israel will not be asked at its expense to do something in this present situation. As a matter of fact, George Shultz, in his several hours with Assad in Syria, over and over again, they protested the agreement that Lebanon and Israel uh, have arrived at and said that they could not accept it, that that's why they're not leaving, that they don't accept it. And over and over again, George Shultz said that agreement stands and we stand with them on that agreement and no, we're not going to change it uh, for Syria. And we do feel that way. One of our problems today is the, the leftover in Lebanon of their own civil war, which wasn't a single civil war. It was just factional fighting between warlords with their own militias. And until we can get the Lebanese army to the place where it has the power to preserve order, uh, there is a handicap there in, in how much we can achieve. Now we are working on that, and we're training uh, the, the Lebanese army and supplying the Lebanese army. And some brigades have come up to a strength where just recently when Israel moved back from that one close contact, Lebanon was able to move in. The, the situation is, is fraught with danger. There's no question about that because of the unusual nature of the whole Lebanese society and the factional fighting between their own groups. Uh, now, the last part of your question... Is it the time to move on to the security alliance arrangements with Israel? Well, I think in a sense that is there. We have assured them, and I have said personally to Prime Minister Begin, that this country is number one going to... We, this came up between us when we were doing some things for some of the Arab states, but doing them in order, we've got to, we've got to convince them that they can have confidence in us and in Israel and come together for a peace agreement. But we said, I said to President Prime Minister Bay, we will never let Israel lose its qualitative or quantitative advantage uh, in weaponry to the place that they're endangered. And in the negotiations for peace, they aren't something that we can impose on them. This, they will have to work out themselves. But we believe that the security of Israel must be a paramount consideration on their side. And uh, we want <coughs> that kind of fairness. And no, we're, this country has always been, since 1948, dedicated to the preservation of Israel. And that still goes. <coughs> Mr. President, the problems of Soviet penetration into Central America is one that we in South Florida are particularly sensitive to. We share your concerns regarding El Salvador, the Sandinistas in Nicaragua, and the support that we find to stabilize the region against communism and communist aggression. However, just as you support our allies in Central America, we urge that you also support our allies in the Middle East. Israel, as you are well aware with America's backing, is the only ally that is able to withstand both internal aggression or external Russian aggression. Mr. President, you have sent signals to Russia regarding Central America. 
could you send the same signals to Russia regarding Israel as an ally of the United States? And let me give you a, a few specifics. Uh, perhaps, as um, Mort Silverman said, a codification of the arrangements between the United States and Israel. A moving forward rapidly on the Levy project, the aircraft project. Increased funding, if necessary, to provide Israel's economic security and make abundantly clear to Syria that we will not make any deal, any deal at all at Israel's expense. Would you consider these, Mr. President, and thank you very much. All of these things, I have to tell you, are accomplished facts. As a matter of fact, a team of ours headed by Ambassador Stessel has just returned as of this morning from touring uh, nine capitals uh, in Europe among our NATO allies on this this whole matter of, of Soviet violation of human rights, particularly with regard to the uh, emigration of Jews from, from the Soviet Union, where they're violating their pledges and so forth, and came back with real strong alliance with us of our, our partners in NATO. With Israel, we are going forward all, on all of those things, and right now our aid to Israel is much greater than it is to any other place in the in the world where we are uh, extending aid. The their security is paramount, and I can only tell you one thing about some of the things. For example, the emigration question. You will just have to believe that I have thought that sometimes our demands in the Soviet Union publicly are self-defeating, politics being what they are. If someone is held up to view and then says, well, if I give in on this now, I look to my own people as if I rolled over under pressure. Please just <coughs> take my word for it that there are, there are contacts and there are messages that uh, are not on the front page of the paper. And uh, we are, they know our position. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. Here. Uh, Mr. President, I'm Herbert Katz. Uh, those of us who have visited the Middle East feel strongly that in order to fully comprehend the territorial and strategic relationships that exist in that area and how these are related to achieving a just and lasting peace, one must see firsthand these territories and countries. A visit there would be helpful. Uh, your possible visit would be helpful to those of us who have advocated your candidacy in 1980 and hope we have the opportunity to do so in 1984. We know of your sincere desire for peace and stability in the region and your strong support for the State of Israel. This perception will be reinforced by such a visit and will further enhance your status in the Jewish community. Mr. Prenner again uh, indicates that um, he probably also does not think this is exactly uh, the right moment. But uh, it, yes, very definitely. I will. Thank you. Alan? We ask the President. This might have to be the last one they tell me. Uh, following up your statement about the uh, migration from Russia, I'd like to ask you this, Mr. President. The Russian government is violating the Helsinki Accords and closing down its, its exit doors on the human rights activists who want to leave Russia. Rumor has it that in Madrid, we are close to an agreement with Russia on human rights. Can we assume that the United States will not join in such an agreement without a commitment from Russia for the release of Sharansky and the other leaders of the human rights movement in Russia? Once again, and knowing that uh, there are no secrets and the media is being covered, <laughs> may I tell you that uh, <laughs> just believe me that <laughs> something has been done. <laughs> we, uh, You're working on this. This has been a very definite part of reaching the agreement that I think they are going to end up signing. Well, thank you, Mr. President. As I say, uh, I want to be. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> <laughs> I am.